intimidating, colossal, destructive. He was a seven-time NHL All-Star, an Olympic gold medalist, and a Hart Trophy recipient. He defined the power forward position, dominating his opponents physically as much as he did on the score sheet. A player whose finesse and speed matches behemoth of a body, whose only response to a fight, flight, or free situation was always to fight. Standing six foot four, two hundred and forty pounds, number eighty-eight, the Big E, Eric Lindros. Eric Brian Lindros was born on February 28, 1973 in London, Ontario, Canada. Dad was an accountant who played minor league hockey as well as college football. Mom was a track athlete in high school before becoming a nurse. Their athletic abilities resulted in the ultimate physical specimen that is Eric Lindros. Lindros began playing hockey at the age of 7, and it was apparent that he was a class above his peers. At the age of 15, Lindros was drafted first overall by the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds, a team that Wayne Gretzky had played for. But his parents had other ideas, as they thought the team was too far out of the city. Thus, Lindros ended up playing for the Detroit Compuware Ambassadors, in which he scored 52 points in a mere 14 games. This prompted the Oshawa Generals to trade for his rights, and they ended up sending three players, two draft picks, and cash just to acquire his services. Eric Lindros was starting to become a household name, as he was being touted as the next one for he not only had the size to play a competitive game, but the hands to complement it too. During his time with the Oshawa Generals in the Ontario Hockey League, Lindros was a man playing amongst boys. In 157 games over three seasons, he managed to score 180 goals and 380 points as he played a huge part in their Memorial Cup victory in 1990. Lindros was the consensus number one pick in the 1991 NHL entry draft, a pick that belonged to the Quebec Nordiques. Lindros announced he would refuse to play for them if chosen, due to their losing culture as they had finished last in the standings for the last three years in a row. The Nordiques picked him regardless, choosing to draft the best player available. Lindros would later clarify and admit his decision to not play for the Nordiques was due to their ownership. Lindros was a man of his word as he withheld his decision to not suit up for the Nordiques, and in the following 1992 NHL entry draft, Lindros was sent to the Philadelphia Flyers in a blockbuster trade that defined both teams for years to come. It's interesting to note that the Nordiques had also agreed on a deal with the New York Rangers, and as the whole fiasco went into arbitration, it was declared the agreement with the Flyers occurred earlier, and thus they were able to finalize the trade. If Lindros was a man playing against boys in junior, he would be a man playing against slightly larger boys in the NHL. Lindros had intimidating size and strength and he was not afraid to use it, bulldozing and ragdolling anyone in his path. He was perfect for the Philadelphia Flyers for they had finally found a player to continue the tradition and reputation of the Broad Street Bullies. Lindros's brute force struck fear into his opponents. His speed was tough to contain as once he picked up momentum, it was the equivalent of a raging bull seeing the color red. He also had the finesse to stick handle in traffic as well as score goals. His playmaking was nothing to scoff at either, as he regularly set up his teammates. But most importantly, when you combine all his attributes, you have a player who cannot be contained, suppressed, nor stopped. Eric Lindros had arrived, and he exploded out of the gate, scoring 41 goals and 75 points in 61 games in his rookie season. Playing on a line with Mark Recchi and Brent Fedick, he spearheaded the Crazy Eights line, as all of them had an 8 in their jerseys. Lindros would find success with this line, but it wasn't until the arrival of John Leclerc via trade from Montreal did he fulfill his true potential. Lindros, along with linemates John LeClaire and Michael Renberg, made up the toughest line in hockey, the Legion of Doom. Each member of this line was at least 6 foot 2 and 230 pounds. Not only could they play skilled hockey, but their rock'em sock'em style of play caused fear in their opponents which led to turnovers and ultimately goals. Lindros would enjoy career years on this line as he picked up the Hart Trophy in 1995 as the most valuable player and the Lester Pearson Trophy as the most outstanding player. The Legion of Doom had their most productive year in the 95-96 season. 
Lindros, in particular, had a career-high 47 goals, 68 assists, and 115 points. But it was the 96-97 season in which Lindros had his most memorable time as a hockey player. A knee injury would limit him to 52 games, yet he still managed 79 points. Crucially, he was healthy heading into the playoffs. As the second seed in the Eastern Conference, Lindros scored 26 points in 19 games as the Flyers dispatched the Pittsburgh Penguins, Buffalo Sabres, and New York Rangers all in five games to win a place in the Stanley Cup Finals. It was a hard-fought series, but the Detroit Red Wings would go on to win the Stanley Cup in four straight games, and this would mark the end of the Legion of Doom and Lindros' best chance at the Stanley Cup. In the offseason, Renberg would get traded out and while Lindros and Leclerc would continue their production, the absence of a consistent linemate saw them fail to reach the heights they once could. Lindros lived by the sword and died by the sword, and ironically, it was his bruise and cruise style play that would ultimately lead to his decline. In 1998, Lindros suffered a tremendous hit from Darius Kasparitis as he was searching for the puck. He would go on to suffer several more concussions, none more devastating than the one in Game 7 of the 1999-2000 Eastern Conference Finals. Lindros had missed a good chunk of games that season, as he had suffered four concussions within the last five months. It was only to protect its players. Regrettably, this would be the last time Lindros would play for the Flyers. Lindros had been critical of the Flyers for mismanaging his health, as he felt they forced him back into action much too soon after a concussion as he was still showing symptoms. Furthermore, in 1999, Lindros suffered a rib injury and was found in the tub of his hotel room cold and white as a ghost. The Flyers wanted to fly him back to Philly, but the trainer decided to take him to a nearby hospital instead. The doctors found Lindros with a collapsed lung and agreed he wouldn't have survived the night if he hadn't gotten medical help. Lindros was openly critical of the Flyers and was even stripped of his captaincy. GM Bobby Clark would question Lindros' toughness as he had spent substantial time on the injured reserve. All these events culminated into why Lindros decided not to accept the Flyers' next contract offer. And the Flyers decided not to trade his rights, and Lindros sat out the entirety of the season in 2000 and 2001. On August 20th, 2001, Lindros was traded to the New York Rangers where he would spend the next three seasons. His production was still respectable, but it was a shell of what it once was, and despite initially being injury-free, he would suffer his eighth concussion of his career in his third and final season with the Rangers, limiting him to 39 games. After the 04-05 NHL lockout, Lindros signed with the Toronto Maple Leafs but only lasted 33 games due to two separate wrist injuries which required surgery. The following 06-07 season proved to be his last as he signed a one-year deal with the Dallas Stars, appearing in 52 games. Lindros officially retired in 2007 at the age of 34 and would later be inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame Class of 2016. He would also have his number 88 retired by the Philadelphia Flyers in 2018. Post-retirement, Lindros has been active with charity work and even donated $5 million to the London Health Sciences Center to support programs related to sports injuries and concussions. He would also become the Ombudsman of the NHLPA with the role of investigating the violation of rights within the administration, although he resigned after 15 months. Lindros will be remembered for his rough play style and his rugged good looks. With only two seasons under his belt, he became the captain of the Philadelphia Flyers at the tender age of 21. In the 2002 Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City, Lindros helped Canada win its first gold medal in 50 years. Throughout his career, he went toe-to-toe -to -toe against the league's toughest players and never backed down, but it's a shame his career was riddled with injuries, as fans were left wondering what could have been. The story of Eric Lindros is unique as there hadn't been such a high-profile refusal to play for the team he was drafted, and there hasn't been since. He went out of his way to clarify that he had no problem with the city or the people, nor the language, that his wife is actually French-Canadian, but it was really a certain individual he didn't want to play for. In 2017, during an interview on French-Canadian television, he was offered a Quebec Nordiques jersey and this time, 26 years later, Lindros put it on with pride. 
and it is with this I'd like us to learn a lesson from Eric Lindros. Conflicts happen and sometimes things spiral out of control, but life is too short to be engrossed in hatred and sometimes it just takes one party to end it once and for all. Lindros made his decision not to play for the Nordiques and he certainly rubbed some fans the wrong way, but he had his reasons and in the end he decided to bury the hatchet. To forgive is to set a prisoner free and discover that the prisoner was you. If you have unfinished business with someone, like Lindros, consider taking the high road. Only then can you be at peace and start living your life to the fullest. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video and would like to help out the channel, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. See you soon.